Hello everyone and welcome to video number 14 of our PHP web developing tutorials. In this video we're going to look at the MySQL command line a little bit more and we're going to look at different queries that we can run. Um, let's just go ahead and get into this real quick, get started. Let's click on the start menu or start button and type in CMD down there in the search. Hit enter or you can click on the cmd.exe. Pull up this command line window. We're going to CD back into the XAMPP. Uh, MySQL bin folder and we're going to run MySQL but this time instead of using user root we're going to use our web dev user that we created in the previous video. And one thing I want to point out is that in the last video I may have confused you a little bit about that user that we created. The user table was, a, was just a generic table that I created uh, as you would on a website to hold user information for your website users. I created that table so that it's just a, a, a table like something you might create for, you, for your website. When we created that user to connect to the database, what we were doing was we were creating a separate user besides root that can connect to that database and access that database. I didn't make that very clear and I, after re-watching that I realized that it could confuse people. The user table has nothing to do with that user that we created later. The user that we created later on in the video was meant to give you access to that database without using the root user. The root user is the admin user in MySQL and on Unix machines. That user account is not a very good account to use for accessing databases, especially from your PHP code, because the root user has complete power over doing anything that it wants to do to your database engine. So every th your database server itself, every database that's on your server can be accessed from root by root. So you don't want to be accessing your databases using the root root user because if there's a security hole in your website, so you create this website and it's a database driven website and you've got PHP making calls to your MySQL database server. You don't want to be accessing that your database using the root user because the root user, if there's a compromise on your website and like someone uses some SQL injection and, and gets has the ability to run SQL commands, you can read up on SQL injection to find out how that's done, but you don't want them to be able to access your MySQL server using the root user. So we create sort of like a sandbox. We give this one user access to that database and then that's the user that you'll use when you connect to your MySQL database server from PHP. We created that user and gave it access to this database and that user was webdev1. It was the same name as our database. So we'll type in a dash u webdev1 and then do a dash p for a password and my password that I set for that was webdev1. And then we've got access to MySQL and we're just going to show the databases to see what we have access to and this user has access to information schema test and web dev one the first two you can ignore because they're just pretty much default databases that mysql has and you won't be using those within your php applications so let's use web dev one and show the tables in that and we're going to describe that user table that's listed there. And this is the user table that I created that had my name and my wife's name in it and, and we had ID's name and age as the fields in there. Well, the the age, I didn't really specify this enough, but the age field has an integer value of, uh, or an integer length of three. That means you can have any integer in there as long as the the number of digits isn't over three so you could actually have an age as far up as 999 years old in there and you would never have anyone that old so three is the limit but you might have a, because you might have somebody that's 100 years old you could actually probably specify two as the maximum length on there and be safe but three will, will encapsulate everybody that's up to 999 years old so everyone should should follow in that pretty easily so there's a, a few things that we're going to do here um, we're going to concentrate on the crud c-r-u-d that means create read update and delete those those th uh, four things that you can do to a table you can create a table you can read a table and you can update a table and you can delete it uh, we're not going to create one we are, we've already created one in PHP my admin but you could have created it at the command line I won't show you how to do that right now but note that anything that you do 
in PHP My Admin. If you create a table in PHP My Admin, when you click the go in there, it'll give you the SQL that's going to run. It actually gives you a SQL statement. And I tell you, I think that if you really want to learn what you sh if you really want to learn SQL itself, then you should really pay attention to those queries that it shows you it's going to run because it gives you a lot of the syntax, the correct syntax for creating those things or updating tables and all that. But when you're doing PHP development, you're going to, you'll either use a, a a class that allows you to access the database in, a, in an abstract way. Most of the time, you'll be using queries directly. Now, either one of those, you're going to re, you're going to need to know how to do, run queries manually to use either one of those proficiently. So you should spend a lot of time learning MySQL or SQL in general. And that's what we're going to do right now. So if we want to select data from that table, we use a select statement. You can capitalize that or you can put it in lowercase. It doesn't really matter when you're doing, dealing with the command line. The proper way is to use capitalization. So you capitalize select. And before we were we were using this asterisk, and that's going that's going to select all the fields. We could also do the same thing by typing ID, comma, name, comma, and age, comma. That would select all the fields that way because we know the names of all the fields. But if we want to shorten that, we can just say this. So we're going to select asterisk from, and then we'll just give the name of the table, which is user, and we hit a, hit a. Uh, semicolon we hit enter so we've selected everything that's in that table so what if we want to select just the ID that's two so we select everything from uh, user where ID equals two and this will give us just the brandy if you notice it's, it's just got that that record we could also select just the name just to show you how that works, select name from from uh, user where ID equals one. Say ID equals one. That'll give just my Randy name. And it still gives the header. It gives you the name or the field name, and that's name in this case. So we that's a few of the ways that you can use select. We're going to insert some data. So we'll insert into and we're, uh, this table is user, and then we'll, we're going to put a parentheses and we're going to give it the the fields that we want to insert so name and age we don't insert the ID because the ID is an auto increment and I need to explain that much in the last video either but auto increment simply means that the the field is incremented every time you add a record to it it automatically does that so that ID field is automatically created every time you add a record to it so we're going to insert into user name and age and then we're going to have the values and we're just going to give a name of John, and we're quoting this, and the age, you know, let's give him 24. And we'll semicolon that. Now let's create another one, let's insert another one with a uh, Jane, and we're going to make her 19. Let's create another one, say Tyler, I'm going to make him 12, actually let's make him 11. And hit enter. So now let's select asterisk from user. We've got all those new users in there. So another thing that we can do is we can see, say we want to get all the users that were over 30 years old, we could select asterisk from user where age is greater than 30. And that's going to give us Randy and Brandy. And we could select asterisk from user where age is greater than it's greater than 20. Let's say greater than 19. Greater than 18. And age is less than 30. Let's say that. And that's going to give us the two guys, uh, two people that are 24 and 19. So this is how you select statements. And we, we inserted. You learned how to use inserts. You learned how to use select. So let's let's update something. Let's say that, that the age for Jane is wrong. Let's say she's actually 20 now. So we're going to update users user set age equal to 20 where ID equals 4 because Jane's ID is equal to 4 we're going to set her age to 20 so let's do that and now let's select asterisk from user and now look Jane's Jane's age is updated to 20 now so that's how you update now 
let's let's delete from user where id is greater than three no uh, greater than two so we're going to go back to our original let's delete it now we select everything so we get we're back to our original so we deleted all the records that were over two now the delete statement is something you need to pay close attention to because you can delete a lot of records and not realize it because you may have made a mistake in the rest of your your syntax so when you're writing the delete statements make sure that you pay attention to what you're doing because you can delete to a, a lot of amount of uh, data that you don't want to delete that's the only one that you, that's really volatile that you have to worry about because the rest will update too you you don't want to update a bunch of people that don't need to be updated so those two that's actually writing to the database you really want to pay close attention to it so that's all we're going to cover in this video it's a short looking at different ways to interact with the database I should make another one of these videos but what I'm going to do is instead of you know spending a lot of time detailing everything that you can do with these databases I'm going to point you toward uh, other resources on this on our website I'll have links to other resources and and also if you have any questions about these make sure to ask us on our site or post in uh, the comments on YouTube any questions you have I'll go over it I may even make another video just to address your your question because I really want people to be proactive in this and, and if they if there's something I'm missing if there's something that I'm not covering good enough I want to know about it so in the next video we are going to be probably connecting to the database using PDO in our PHP code and I'll show you how to do these queries from PHP and pull that information into a, a web page so it should be pretty pretty interesting and uh, hope you enjoyed the video please subscribe